go. These bolts here. That's what it looks like. Oh, that's just the Torx. No, it's not. It's not a Torx. It's called triple square. If you put a Torx socket on it, you will, at the very, very least, um, damage the threads or damage the actual the head where the bolt, uh, where the socket goes into. Um, at the best, you'll take it out and everything would be fine. But you could end up in a situation where you have to try and manhandle this out. And you may get lucky with vice grips, but there's a good chance that you have to drill it. Anyway, it's called a triple square, and these ones are on a M10, which coincides with the diameter of the thread. You can see M10 right there. So we'll take out the last of the triple squares and we'll get the rest of the bolts and nuts out from the sump guard and then we'll withdraw it and we'll see what wonders lie underneath. So we started it off with our breaker bar. We got one turn and then I switched to the ratchet. I'm only using this very long extension just to make it easier so my hands aren't in the frame all the time. Okay, we'll do the rest of them and let's see how that goes. So, let's see what size that is. That looks like 13 mil to me. Let's see if it is. Well, it wasn't 13, it was a 15, but always try and use six-sided hexagon socket if we can, instead of a star. Um, they're just, they grip better. That's the bottom line. So if you use a long socket like this, remember, we don't necessarily need an extension. Oh, and that one's a different size. So that one's 13 and these ones are 15. How about this guy? 15. Wow. So we have a combination, 15s and 13s. Well, let's do the 13 as well. Notice how I'm supporting the head of the ratchet with my left hand. That stops it. I try and turn it like this. The ratchet does that. We do not want that. We want this to stay parallel to our bolt that we're removing or a nut if it's a nut that we're taking out. When it gets so far, you can do it with one hand and then it's finger tight. Look here, you'll see special whoopsie special washers they get in and there's some teeth inside there you can see it's a shiny part not the dull bit and then what happens is when you get it really tight these grip together and they're anti-vibration it's instead of spring washers these are much stronger So much easier. Has this been off before? We will find out soon enough what horrors lie underneath. Back ones. Okay, so the back ones are much longer, so I'll have to remember where those ones went because all of these are slightly different, aren't they? Take out our long last one. Notice if I'm ratcheting quickly, always hold the head. It, um, If you're ratcheting quickly. Oh, so we've got spacers as well. Thank you. Don't forget.
get those, otherwise you'd be in a world of pain with your transmission pan. Oh, I'm sorry for nudging you there. Okay. Now, we draw, we'll do the last two. Now they're turning, we need to support the weight of this because it's quite heavy. So I'll get a little jack there. And I also need a spanner to go on the top or a wrench. I'm sure it's cool and wrenches really, shouldn't we? Considering it's wrench and rover. Anyway, spanner or wrench to go on the top. We'll undo this, support this with a jack, and then we will be uh, lowering down our skid plate. As you can see, I'm not actually putting that much load on it. All it is, is just to support the weight when they take these last two out, um, just to make it easier so it doesn't really drop too much. And then we can withdraw it. Now, I need a 13 mil spanner. And we can crack on. See what they did there? Instead of using the open jaw, and pushing it through. If you can, always use a ring. It supports it a little bit more and it's less tendency for it to slip and it's harder to round and nut off. So, our spanner here. One finger on the top, that way we'll keep it nice and tight. Remember, we have our knurled portion on our socket, which is the bit that's easy to grip. There we go. What I am going to do is I'm going to leave these bolts in. Doing the same on the other side. Just doing it blind through so touch alone. Okay, be prepared for your plate to drop on you. So, supporting it with one hand, as well as use your fingers to undo. Oh man, this one's sandy. The last of our nuts. Now, what do you think we're going to find? I think there's going to be a lot of horrible stuff. One side. You ready for the big reveal? Ta-da! That's not too bad. Yeah, I thought it'd be worse than that. Much worse. So, that is what we have on top of our plate. A beautiful layer of nature's thermal insulation material. Mud is a really good insulator, by the way. That's why they used to use the original Adobe on houses, is uh, mud and straw. So, that's that. And underneath, you can see it's a bit grotty. 